Greetings and uh, blessed Sabbath day to each and every one of you. This is the Sabbath of the Lord and we are so glad that He has given us another day to worship Him, to remember Him and to rest from our labors and challenges that we have had throughout the week. Before we get into the subject matter, uh, let's have a word of prayer. Loving Lord, our Father God, which art in heaven, we thank you once again for the Sabbath day you have given unto us. We pray in a special way that you would uh, help us at this time. As many of us are coming together around the world or at, uh, at home or at a local physical church somewhere to worship you in spirit and in truth, we pray that you will be in our midst. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. We have many warnings from both the Old Testament and the New Testament in regard to the kind of people that we should be versus that of the world. We are told that God's people are supposed to be a peculiar people, not because they are perfect, but because the God that they serve is perfect. We all have sin and fallen short of the glory of God. But God now calls us to repentance. And if we proclaim to be Christians, it does not mean that we do, do not make mistakes. We do make mistakes. We do fall short of the glory of God. As the Bible says, a righteous man falleth, but he is seven times and he gets back up again. As long as we realize and uh, acknowledge our sins God and, and confess them, God is more than faithful and just to forgive us of all unrighteousness, the Bible says. So I wanted to make that point very clear because some, as I go through this video, some might see this as a judgmental uh, video or, or message. It has nothing to do with that. We need to look at what kind of people that God has called us to be. Bible says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. We're supposed to be different, peculiar. Yes, we do fall short sometimes, but God forgives us of our sins. He calls us to get back up and strive to do better. Part of the messages that God has given to Seventh-day Adventists to proclaim in these last days, it's not a message to mingle, as our leaders have told us. It's not a message to even try to get to know, as they said, who Babylon is and the fallen churches that follow Babylon. But rather, it is a message to call a people out of the false system, out of the Babylonian false system of worship. It is a people, a call rather, to separate ourselves from the world. As I mentioned last time, it is a very similar message that John the Baptist proclaimed. Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straighter. And the Bible says that John the Baptist called the people to the wilderness. He was there preaching in the wilderness. He was calling them out from their comfort zone, from their sins, from their surroundings that were not good for their spiritual health. It was a bad environment. And for those of us who are preparing ourselves for the second coming of Jesus Christ, we must likewise get rid of any things that would entangle us, trap us, the environment around us that has become such a big temptation for us. We must get away from those things. Now, Revelation 18, it makes it very clear what our message is. It is a message to call a people out of Babylon because Babylon is fallen, is fallen because of her transgression, because of her sins. And God is about to pour the seven last plagues upon Babylon. We find a similar message in 2 Corinthians 
chapter 6, verse 17, we read, Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch, not, touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. So again, the message is to come out from among them. Elijah called the people out of apostasy. Jesus called the disciples out to follow him. John the Baptist preached the same message as well. And our message in these last days is not different than what was preached before. But instead of calling a people out of the Babylonian system, we are taking them straight to it. The same way the leaders of the Seventh Adventist Church took us to Babylon to take the Babylonian sorcery, the Babylonian poison. Here is another way they are doing this. We read, is the Adventist church encouraging us to attend movie theaters? My answer to that, yes. And it, it has been happening for many, many, many years. Entertainment, giving the flesh, what the flesh desires, what the flesh wants, not what the flesh needs now, but what the flesh wants. Entertainment. So is the Adventist Church, that is the general conference for that matter, encouraging us to attend movie theaters? Well, let's go now to the Hope Channel. That... Um, Spiritualism logo there for the Hope Channel. The Hope Channel, again, for those of you who are not familiar with it, that is the main television network for the General Conference. They said here, the hopeful, a riveting tale of faith and perseverance coming to theaters April 17th, 2024. Hope Channel International is excited to work with Fatum events, that is the world we are told to come out of, to bring the exclusive theatrical release of Hope Studios, The Hopeful. The audiences nationwide this April 17 and 18, directed by who? By a seven Adventist? By some seven Adventists? No, by the world. The quote unquote esteem, Carl Part Berry, an Emmy Award, uh, Award uh, winner and three-time nominee of the Australian Directors Guild, this compelling historical drama promises to enlighten and inspire with its profound narrative of courage, hope, and love set against the backdrop of war and the dawn of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. So basically what they are referring to here is the story of our pioneers, focusing on the Millerite movement at the beginning and to Ellen White, the spirit of prophecy, as you could see the picture there on the screen. But the question that I would like to ask, would God approve of us going to the world and to make movie to partner with the world as they said they partnered with Fatum events and here is the website for Fatum event you could see what they are into entertainment welcome to Fatum events where fans and communities connect entertainment would God approve of us going to the movie theater under the umbrella of well, it's a Christian movie. It's about our history, Seven Adventists. Well, the other excuse that they will come up with, they will say it's about spreading the Adventist mission. Remember, mission, mission. Everything is mission. Mandating you to take the Babylonian sorcery. Babylonian poison is part of our mission. Promoting climate change, the climate stem, I should say, is part of our mission. Everything they are doing, interfaith, ecumenical gathering, is part of our 
mission. Entertainment is part of our mission. What was the counsel given to us when it comes to theatrical? In connection with the proclamation of the first, second, and the third angel messages. Listen to what Spirit Prophecy says. I am instructed that we shall meet with all kinds of experiences and that men will try to bring strange performances. Notice, strange performances into the work of God. What are those strange performances she's referring to? We have met such things in many places. In my very first labors, the message was given that all, how many now? All theatrical performances in connection, notice carefully, in connection with the preaching of present truth were to be discouraged and forbidden. All theatrical performances in connection with the message for this time, present truth, which is what the flight needs now, must be discouraged and the next word says forbidden. Well, since the general conference is not preaching present truth, then that is the reason why we see theatrical movies and entertainment, those things are taking place from within to spoil the flock, to deceive the flock, eventually to lead the flock to perdition. It goes on to say, men who thought they had a wonderful work to do sought to adopt a strange department and manifested oddities in bodily exercise. The light given me was, give this no sanction. These performances which severed of the theatrical were to have no place. Where? In the proclamation of the solemn messages entrusted to us. Can you imagine the disciples getting involved in entertainment? as a quote-unquote way to further the mission. Can you picture Jesus doing that? Can you picture the Apostle Paul who suffered, even uh, experienced a martyred death? Can you see him using entertainment as a way to bring souls to Jesus Christ? That would be the excuse that some will say will be the excuse oh brothers and sisters the hopeful may i change the title to the hopeless that's what the, this should be all now on the screen this is one of the main actors she is really the main actress in the movie playing the role of ellen white now the question we may be asking who was Ellen White? Was Ellen White a celebrity? Was Ellen White an actress? Was Ellen White a worldly individual? Who is this lady? It's the next question. Play the role of Ellen White. Who is she? Where does she come from? Is she a seventh day? Adventist. Well, this is her name here. Her name is Tommy Ember Piri or Piri. You could see there it says she is an actress. She is also a director, movie director, and a writer. Down below, as you can see from the yellow arrows, again her name is known for the retreat those are some of her, of her best movies but she she was in more movies than that but in the retreat 2021 uh genie and georgia also came out in 2021 and the kids in the hall which came out in 2022 now remember those years 2021 2022 she also had uh, at least one movie based on my review and search that she also had a movie that came, at least one, that came out in 2020. Now, remember those years, 2020, 2021, 
coup, especially the first two years, 2020 and 2021. They were entertaining us at home while we were being restricted. We could not do X, Y, Z. Hollywood was still producing movies in, in spite of lockdowns, restrictions, but Hollywood was still out there on the streets making movies, making sure that they keep us entertained so that we don't go anywhere. So that is the lady there that they have chosen to play the role of Ellen White in this movie again, which was retitled The Hopeful. And on the screen, this is, it, there's no sound, but this is just a short clip of the movie. And this is her there playing the role of Ellen White. And as I asked the question, who was Ellen White? Was she a movie actress? Was she a worldly individual? Or was she someone who was gifted by God? As the Bible says in Revelation 12, 17, the dragon was rough with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. In Revelation chapter 19, verse 10 tells us the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy, which we know as seven Adventists was given through the ministry of Ellen White. So that is who Ellen White was. But this is the person that they have playing the role of Ellen White. Would you approve of this? Now, you may not be able to see this clearly, but the picture on the right, she's holding, she has this hospital gown on, but she is smoking at the same time. In the next clip, you will be able to see it much better. This is from one of her movies. And you could see here, it's going to come back here in a moment. Let me just fast forward this here. From the clip, there she is. Let me go back. You could see, you're going to see her walking down and smoking at the same time. And this is another part to the movie as you watch this carefully notice the individual once again who played the role of Ellen White once again would you as seven-day Adventists approve of this did the general conference bother to ask is it okay if we were to hire such person go to Hollywood to do, to do something like that. This is again one of her movies and this is nothing compared to what we are about to see next. Theaters, when we were told we should not bring such theatrical performances to the work of God. Again, Sister White says, I'm instructed that we shall meet with all kinds of experiences and that men will try to bring strange performances into the work of God. We have met such things in many places. In my very first labors, the message was given that all theatrical performances in connection with the preaching of present truth were to be totally discarded and or discouraged and uh, forbidden she says and then skip on down she says the light given me was give this no sanction these performances which severed of the theatrical were to have no place in the proclamation of the of the solemn messages entrusted to us yet the general conference says forget about that let's go to the movie theater and as we just saw this is the individual that they have chosen to play the role of Ellen White. And by the way, none of the cast 
are Seventh-day Adventists, as far as I know. Now, this is another movie. As I said, um, let me, before I show this, let me say this before I show some of those pictures here. First of all, I will apologize for showing those pictures, but it has to be shown at the same time. Viewer discretion is advice. Once again, because we have to know who we are dealing with and where the general conference is leading the flock. Listen once again. This was one of the movies that she, that lady who played the role of Ellen White, was into. It is called How to Plan an Orgy in a Small Town. And the yellow arrow is pointing to her. This is supposed to be the Ellen White in that movie, the quote-unquote hopeful. Another one here. This was another movie that she was also part of. The movie was called the what now? The F word. Now you know exactly what that means. And the yellow arrow is pointing down to her as one of those individuals who were cast into that movie F word. No kidding. Another movie that she was part of. It is called Cluster and then you don't even have to finish that one. You know exactly what that means. Cluster is the sexy, funny, heartfelt, and always entertaining story of a group of friends in their mid-twenties who drank too much, make mistakes, hurt each other, hurt themselves, and live to learn from it all. And a coming of age into adulthood web series uh, in a time where it's normal to stay a kid well into your grown up years. And if you look down below where it says stars, and the first name there is Tommy Amber Perry. That is that same lady who played the role of Ellen White. Another movie. This one is even way worse. And I don't even advise you to search for this one. This one is called Below Her Mouth. This says an unexpected affair quickly escalates into a heart-stopping reality for two women whose passionate connection changes their lives forever. And that same lady was also in that movie. And that movie was pure pornographic movie. Nothing. It was about two women who fell in love. And she was cast. She was part of that movie as well. And yet, the General Conference wants you to believe, wants you to think that this is a great opportunity for us to tell the world, as they called the first one, tell the world. Tell the world about what? Hmm? About how we are part of the entertainment? Tell the, you mean, uh, tell the world about how we are com compromising? Again, I am not judging this lady here. She's in the world. We have no business in going to the world and have such a person who played the role of Ellen White, of all people. Ellen White, smoking in um, porn movies and all of those things. Tell the world. Yet, I'm the enemy whenever I open my mouth to say something. Whenever I say something, I'm the problem, they say. And they will gossip about me and say all kinds of things about me. So I have to shut me down. They have a coalition from both conference and non-conference alike that are trying to destroy Amazing Word Ministries. And part of the reason is because Amazing Word Ministries, and I don't boast when I say things like that, I expose the abomination of the conference, the apostasy of the conference, the most. And they hate me. I'm the, their enemy, number one, for talking about those things, for exposing this type of abomination. This is the lady once again. Another movie that she directed. She was the director of that movie. That's her name there. Yellow Arrow is pointing at it. The name of the movie is called Queer Your Stories. Remember Queer? 
That's LGBT community. And this is her in the, on the right. I had to cover, as you can see here, I had to cover part of her body here with um, uh, this here that you can see uh, over her picture there. Again, queer. She, in the movie, which she directed, was promoting queerness, LGBT community. Sodomy, in other words. Another one here, on the left is her, and then on the far right is her in that movie. It says here, Tommy Ember, that's her name again, and Sarah Allen, on portraying the real-life horrors of, what's the word? Homophobia. That means those who are against the gay lifestyle, the LGBT, in The Retreater. The Retreat, that is another movie that she was in. Again, this is the same person, not condemning her, not judging her. My main focus is the general conference, telling us, encouraging us to go to the movie theater, to watch the so-called The Hopeful with that same lady. And what? where will that lead? Well, A, if I can go to the movie theater for this, then I might as well go watch her other movies as well. And many of her movies are about sex and violence, smoking, drugs, and all of those things. Whatever happened to being a peculiar people? Listen to what Spirit Prophecy went on to tell us in Manuscript 19, 1910. I have a message for those in charge of our work. Do not encourage the men who are to engage in this work, to think that they must proclaim the solemn, notice the next words, sacred message in a what? Theatrical style, not one jot or tittle of anything theatrical is to be brought into our work. One more time, not one jot or one tittle or one or anything rather, theatrical is to be brought into our work. This is very similar to what Jesus said in Matthew 5, verse 17. Not one jot or one tittle shall be removed or taken from the law. Not, think not, he said, that I have come to, to destroy the law. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Not one jot or one tittle shall pass away from the law until all be fulfilled. Likewise, we are not supposed to bring this kind of theatrical, performances, entertainment under the umbrella of reaching the world, tell the world. Listen, it says, not one jot or one tittle of anything theatrical is to be brought into our work. God's cause is to have a sacred, notice the word sacred again, heavenly mold. Let everything connected with the giving of the message for this time bear the water. The divine impress, let nothing of a one more time of a theatrical nature be permitted, for this would spoil the sacredness of the work. It will do what? Spoil the sacredness of the work. And so, when we see the general conference is entertaining us with the so-called the hopeful, According to spiritual prophecy, this is spoiling. What is it spoiling? The sacredness of the work. And especially when you have such an individual that is known for making horn movies, violence movies, promoting LGBT community. Why, brothers and sisters? Are we blind? Can we not see that they are going totally contrary to what we are told to do and not to do? Are we blind? Yet, as it was always the case, watchmen is the one to blame. The one who are sounding the trumpet on the wall of Zion is the one to blame. Meanwhile, the straight testimony tells us that nothing of a theatrical nature be permitted for this would spoil the sacredness of the work, which goes along with uh, what the Bible tells us here in Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 26. 
her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things, they have put no difference between the what? The holy and the profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean. Indeed, brothers and sisters, they have made no difference between the clean and the unclean. Promoting a movie about our pioneers, and especially the main character being Ellen White, and you had this person who was in several movies. One of them is called the F movie or the F word, and porn movies to play Ellen White. If we keep quiet and we don't expose the abomination. Now keep in mind, some are going to say, well, what about you? You you have this and that. Will you talk about Ted Wilson? Am I talking about Ted Wilson private life? Or am I talking about things that they themselves, this is not gossip, they themselves have put those things on social media for the world to see. When you put anything on social media, it is subject to criticism. If anybody talk about it, especially if it has nothing to do with your private life, then it is not gossip. Again, the Bible says, we need to cry aloud, spare not, lift up our voices like a trumpet, and show my people their sins in the house of Israel their transgression. If we keep quiet at such a time as this, we don't expose this abomination, God will hold us accountable because we have been raised to give the trumpet a certain sound. Let's have a word of prayer. Loving Father God, which art in heaven, help us, Lord, such a time as this, to realize that the fulfillment of one of the key signs that Paul mentioned that will take place before the second coming of Jesus Christ, which is the falling away, which is apostasy in the church, indeed is here. Prepare your people to stand as the ones that are described in Ezekiel 9, verse 4, who are sighing, crying, and sighing for the abomination that is being done within this denomination. Forgive us, we pray. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Thank you.